move everything out of my way. And last time we talked about like some of the basics of lettering. So we're going to cover a couple more things on lettering. Um, I know I did a little bit of, you know, the reshaping, but I want to cover a little bit more on that. And then we're going to look at name drops. So let's go to our lettering. And let me double check, make sure we're recording okay. Okay, we are. So let's go over to our lettering. And you can get access the lettering by clicking on the A on your Create toolbar if you see my mouse. Or going up to your Create menu option and insert text. So when this opens, you know, I'm just going to type in my name. Okay, now I'm just using the Arial font. We're at about one inch. I'm going to leave that alone. I just want to cover something really quick. We have this option called Use Art Font. When I use Art Font, I can reshape the lettering that's on the screen based on the shapes. And I have some editing options. So, you know, since we're coming into like cheerleading season, for example, I could go ahead and select this shape. It looks like a megaphone and say, OK, and say, OK, again. Now, here's my shape. Now, I have a couple of options here. You know, here is, you know, this little yellow diamond right here. And I can straighten that out. Or I can skew that down. And it's going to size the lettering accordingly. This one is going to let me pull that, you know, further. Or squish it together. Right, so you need to be a little bit careful if you're squishing things together. You might have to come in to edit and say, well, you know, let's make that lettering a little bit smaller and see if it fits on the line. Okay, now, you know, I have these corner options. So that's just going to let me scale these larger or smaller. And, you know, I can go like this as well and scale that slightly like this. And it gives somewhat of a 3D appearance to the letters. Okay, let's go ahead and generate so you can see. It's not just that I skew these a little bit. There's a little bit of a 3D appearance, you know, as I use these art font shapes, right? So there's one. Now there's a number of them in the program. And each one has its own, you know, little kind of quirks. As I come in, I shouldn't say quirks, you know, its own little uses maybe. But to me, they're kind of fun because they do give you that 3D appearance. I still keep all of my editing features. Okay, so here's, you know, the double arch. And, you know, this is going to be the same thing. It's going to be, you know, how big or small this arc is, right? This is going to straighten that out. You can see the letters are shaping automatically as I do this. If I really want to scale this a little bit taller, you can see what's going on as I pull on these black side boxes here. Okay? And here's what I end up with. So I can really reshape this letter. Now, if I want to, I could also scale this out. And, you know, I can pull these two letters that are reshaped the most over a little bit. You can see them adjusting as I bring them in. And I can get a little bit of a different adjustment to that. So I have a lot of options with art font. Okay, so we have a lot of you here who haven't used name drop and a lot of you who haven't used the art font. So, all right. Um, okay, so I'm going to kind of go about it like this. So I kind of know where to gauge, you know, what to show you guys because I didn't want to go through a big art font thing if you guys have used art font or not used art font. Why art font can be useful Besides the fact it reshapes things, like you saw the cheerleader type of, of look, right? So I'm just going to kind of show you the art font options very quickly. Um, these you kind of have to play with. Here are all of your settings. Here's what we call the house. I always thought it should be named like the baseball diamond, right? Because, you know, I can make this taller or I can skew that here, you know, but I can also, you know, straighten this out, make it more severe. And no matter what I do on the sides here, I always have the option of scaling this to get it to be what I want it to be. So besides just the art font shape, I also have that option of using these, you know, black, see the black boxes right here? 
to resize those around. And you can see, you know, it also flips if I want to. So look at the art font, and if you get a chance, just play with it. You know, there's a lot of different settings, but each one gives you options. So, you know, if you're doing this, you know, of course you've got these options. These corners are almost always going to straighten you out. That is always going to be your spacing. So that's going to space the entire design. And these black arrows are, you know, going to behave just as they do kind of on your regular, you know, resize. If I click on the black arrow here, I can resize it this way. But what's neat is if I click on these you know, side arrows, like here, you know, I'm just going to extend the width, but these arrows are going to extend, you know, the reshape. So, you know, go through the shapes, and our font can be, you know, for something very specific, like, you know, here's the wave. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this as is in the wave. And there's the amount of wave you can create, of course. And then you can always reshape it. But what's kind of nice, if you look at this, it's got a 3D view to it. The way it reshapes the letters is not just going to be kind of to wave them. There's a little bit of a 3D view going on to these. The program will stitch these, and it's going to adjust this, but you can see the 3D effect. So it's something that you might be able to offer to your customers that's, you know, a little bit unique. All right, so... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start on name drop. When you are working on um, a logo for, you know, a company that has like 12 employees and they want 12 names put in there, what you can do, I'm trying to find a picture, let me see what I have real quick that I can open up. Um, I'll go ahead and open up this design. And let me get rid of the image in the background. So, you know, if you had this is kind of big, you probably wouldn't use this. But what if they wanted their employees' names put, like, right here, and they had 12 employees? So I'm going to get rid of this little piece <laughs> and this little tree piece, and we'll just pretend that we have this, you know, logo that one of the, our, your customers has brought in and that they want their employees' names all put here. And, you know, they want them to fit within this space right here. So, you know, the first thing and maybe, you know, the one thing to really look at is to go ahead and click on this. Make sure if you're, you've been playing with art font that you turn it off and you make your first name. Okay, now that obviously is going to be bigger than what is desired, right? So, you know, I'm gonna, just going to take this first name and I'm going to hold... You know, I'm not going to hold the shift key. I'm just going to drag it so that this name fits into the space that, you know, they've allotted. This is what they, you know, they want. They don't want it to extend beyond here. So here's the space that I have, right? Right here. Go ahead and click over here. Now, if I come up here and I go to, you know, art fonts and I click on this double A up here, if I click on this, nothing happens, right? You know, this is not going to give me anything. But if I click on the double A, it opens up this art font. Okay, so now I know that I've got, you know, my first name in there, but it's not listed here. You know, so if you're sizing it this way, you're not going to get what you want. Now, I may get one name out of here, but I might not get my name drop here. So, you know, you can leave this here if you want as a guide, but in most cases, that's not going to help you much. So click on your double A and come up here, and what's your first name? And if you can see, you've got, you know, A, B, and C. Okay, A is first name, middle initial, C, right? So, you know, as you type in this, if you want to put a full name in, you have A, B, and C, right? It makes individual lines. Okay, it's not going to string that all the way out. All right, so let me undo that so you understand, like, what the settings are. Okay, so as I double-click on this name drop, and, you know, I, A is going to be the first line, B is the second line, 
sees the third line, you have to look at it like that A, B, and C, one, two, and three, three lines, right? Well, if all you're doing is putting the person's first name in, you put the person's first name in. So if I put the first person in, in here's my size, vertical or auto space, you know. So you have these different options here. We're going to leave these alone for right now. We're going to leave space alone for right now, too. Um, you know, align mode, middle, right, left, that has to do with A, B, and C sections, right? Font, Arial, so you can change all of those things here as you need to. And we're going to look at this, you know, in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and make two names. And, you know, as I go, I can tab through if I want. You can see what happens as I tab. It goes bing, bing, bing across those three spaces and then down. Um, Okay, so it's a little bit longer name. Here's a very short name. And I'm going to go ahead and say okay. So let's go ahead and generate. So what I have is, here's my first name. Up here, there's my second name. Third name. Fourth name. Okay, so, you know, if I look at this and I think, wow, you know, I've got these names, but, you know, they're not showing up. How do you possibly line them up, right? How do you know that they're lined up? Well, let's go back into our settings. They're centered, so they're going to center no matter where I put them. Okay, so if we start with, you know, number one here, Bernie, and I take this name and I move it up here, and I say, oh, wait, you know, that really has to be about that size. And, oh, you know, it's, it's let's double check in 3D, make sure it's spaced. Oh, you know, that says zero. Right. Well, if I move one of them, they all move. See? So if I just move one, all of these names move to the position I want. Now, we have some other settings to look at in these. So let's go back up here. All of these are going to adjust. So if I say, you know what, alignment mode's got to be on the left. If you look on my alignment now, remember I put left. So I can say, okay, and let's go back here. You know, so we've got this offset, so now we have to deal with it. Let's move this back into position. We know that we don't want it to go any further than this. Let's go back up here. So if that's my, you know, my offset, right, the spacing's not going to help. We could try auto space and see what happens. And it auto spaces the letters. Okay, so now it's maybe made it a little bit wider than what we want, and we can scale that down. And as I look through all of these names, that auto space is doing a pretty good job. Now I've got a problem with Jennifer. It's a little bit longer. So you have to kind of decide what you want to do with Jennifer. You can make the name smaller. You can keep the height, and you can space the name out. So if you have longer names like this, you may have to make some adjustments. But for the most part, everything else is looking pretty good. Bob's a little short. You know, that's why you have the option for centering. You know, so there we go. So, you know, if you don't like where Bob is here, you have the choice. You can make Bob bigger, or you can come up back up here, and you can do a line in the middle. But if you align it and move it, you're going to have to move, you know, bob over where you want it. And then let's go take a look at what the other ones did. And they all adjust as I move them. So basically what you're going to have to decide, that's centered, that's centered, that's now centered, and bob is now centered. Okay, so you have a lot of options, and I hope I haven't confused you all with this because we're going to go through this again. I'm trying to remember which one here does not have any big issue. We'll open up the jolt. Okay, so here's your customer's logo. Let me group this together. You've made your customer's logo, and they want their employees' names here. So you say, okay, you've got five employees. So we click on the name drop.
Okay, so there's our names. Okay, so as I'm setting these up, you know, we already know the spacing doesn't really do, you know, you'd have to kind of really adjust that spacing and play with it, but you know, out of space is not too bad, right? This is gonna be way too big for that logo, so let's just automatically take it down to about 15. We're gonna align it to the left. Um, and I'll show you why, based on this logo. And we'll leave this at Arial, and I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. All right, so let's generate. Now, I want this name to be right next to the logo, like that. So there's my first one, and let's take a look at Ben. There's Ben. There's Michelle. And, you know, I'm going to have to kind of decide, whoa, maybe Michelle needs edited because, you know, I don't know how big she's going to be. But, you know, you might double check. Like, if you know it's supposed to be four inches, double check your size. And you might have to adjust Michelle just a little bit. But you've got all of the names in here. There's Marge. You know, there's David. Okay. So, you know, what if your customer comes back and says, well, you know, I like that, but, you know, I really want you to move their names down here. Well, they all move down there. Right? Or if the customer says, yeah, you know, really, I like that, but, you know, I really want that to be centered. Well, you know, before you just move everything over, go back in here and say, align it by the middle. Because that's going to automatically adjust it. Maybe they want everybody's name to be down here. Because if you move it to the middle, then, you know, everybody's going to center under there. Okay, so does that make a little more sense to you guys now? Um, Gail's asking on this if I have to add color stops when I do my setup and optimize. Nope, I don't. Now, I'm going to show you the DST file now that I, you know, I have a file I know doesn't have any issues. Um, so, you know, but that's the name drop. So, you know, be careful. Like when you change one of these, you are changing the settings for all of these. Okay, now we did auto space, but let's say, you know, we want to try. Let's space this out 1.0. Well, let's see what happens. It kind of doesn't do quite what you want, right? Let's say we want to fit this in 4.0. Okay, so what that space option is telling me is that I'm fitting this in a 4.0 space. Okay, so, you know, and I don't know if that makes sense. It kind of isn't what you think it is, that spacing option. If I come up here and I say, you know, that's a 4.0 space. So I'm spacing these like points away. It's not quite, a, I guess it's kind of millimeters, but it's not quite what you think. Like if I change it to 2.0, that squishes a little bit closer together. So it's a little more fine tuned than auto space. Here's auto space. Auto spaced, right? I don't even have to have that select, and I can just come in here and say, you know, nah, I don't, I don't want auto space. Let's go ahead and make that 2.0, and this is what I get. Now, oh, sorry, let me get out of that. Now, when I auto space Michelle, and I look at the other ones, or when I, you know, space it at 2.0, they're all going to be spaced the same. So any changes I make here affect all of this. And I'm going to make this ridiculously large. I'll make it five. There's Ben. There's Michelle. Okay, so any change, no matter what names are in here, if I change one of these, and it doesn't matter if they're selected or they're not selected, if I change one, I have changed them all. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Now, to answer your question about do I have to put color stops, I'm going to save this. And I think I saved it as, I oh, will just, testing name. Okay, so I'm saving this. I'm going to replace that. And then I'm going to come up to my export, and I'm going to go to export to... And 
trying to name this name test too. Exporting out to DST, and it's good to go, right? Well, okay, let me show you what actually happened now that I have a file I know is not going to kind of crash on me. Um, I import this, go to import to, and let me find my DST file, which is name test two. So when I open this, I've got all of this. I've got the orange, there's my logo, and it looks like a mess, and you're kind of going, oh, you know, holy bejeebas, right? Because this is a mess, but it's not. Okay, here's my logo. Here's my name, right? And here's my logo. Here's my name. Here's my logo. Here's my name. Here's my logo, and here's my name. Here's my logo, and there's my name. And this will continue if it has 100 names, right? Well, it is, you're kind of limited. You can go up to 25 names at a time. And the reason it does it this way is when you're in production, you have, you know, in this case, five shirts. So when you make the design and you put the name in, if you did this individually, you would Hoop the shirt, load the design, stitch the design. Hoop the next shirt, remove the design, load the design, hope it centers, right? With this, I don't have to worry about it. Everything's centered. This stitch is my first color, my second color, right? And then I'm done with the shirt, and I put the next shirt on. But you know what the name drop is designed to do? is to save you time and line things up well and give you the ability to say, okay, I'm gonna stitch this. Okay, boom, that's done. Put the next one on, hit start. So instead of load and reload and rehooping or um, trying to center everything perfectly design by design, name drop gives you that option. You may have to babysit a little bit and I will check on that with James, but I wanted to show you how that worked and it's just something that can save you time and align things. Because if I did these each individually, I would have to kind of align them and delete them and move them anyway. So, you know, doing them this way at least allows me the option of making sure that these are aligning up. And I'm going to kind of undo what I did. Nope, it's not going to let me. So, you know, that way I know that they're lining up properly. Let me see if it goes back here. But anyway, so that's what the name drop function does. And I wanted to kind of cover that. I know it seems a little bit confusing. And until you guys kind of play with this and see what your individual machines do, then, you know, you're not, it's not going to necessarily make a lot of sense to you. Okay, especially like when I first looked at that, it was like, wow, this doesn't even show up, you know, but they're there. Everything is there. So here's my original file. This is the file that I exported and turned into that DST file that I brought in that had the logo multi multiple times, right? And then allowed me to, um, you know, to just you know, stop and then re rehoop and just hit start again rather than load a design. So I don't know if that makes a lot of sense. If you don't do production in that fashion, you're probably thinking, I may never ever use this. But it does help when you have names for, even if you're just doing monograms on a shirt, you can do that in name drop as well. Um, you know, I can come over here and say, okay, it should be, you know, BMG. You know, A, B, C. You know, I'm just going to kind of pick pick letters M, J, F. And, you know, Marge, we're going to bump off here. And Dave, we're going to bump off. And, you know, I'm going to make this, you know, one of my script fonts. I'm not really sure what I have on here, so I'm just going to kind of grab something. It might not be very good, but Calamity Jane, and uh, yeah, I'm going to bold Calamity Jane, and by the way, it's going to be 32, and I'm going to say OK, and let's go ahead and generate. There we go. So now what I've got is ABC, 
MJF, they're all right there. Everything's there. So if you're doing like a bridal party, um, like you know, I recently had to do shirts for my, you know, sister's or my, my sister, my niece's wedding for her bridesmaid. So, you know, there you go. Boom. You've got all of those in the same spot. And all you're going to do is just hoop, 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 and hoop, stop and hoop, stop and hoop. So, you know, if that makes sense to you, if you can see a use for it, it's generally easier than trying to do these letters individually and getting them to fit or align perfectly. See, when I click on these, you know, the letters may be different and they may space a little bit or they may be wider or narrow depending on the scrolls, but they're all fitting in that spot. And it's particularly helpful if I happen to have, you know, a particular frame or, you know, something that I'm fitting into, right? And there it is. I knew there was a little thing on here. So if you have a particularly sized frame, not that this is a gorgeous frame, but, you know, and you get, let me get rid of our, and we'll turn that to pink, or better yet, you know what, I could just do it the easy way. I could just say, oh, you know, by the way, we're doing this monograms, and we don't, we don't want to use this, but we do want to use a circular border, and we're going to use this one. Okay, so there's my border. And I might make that a little bit bigger, depending on what I need. But there's my border. There's my A. I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay. And I'm going to move these to the bottom so you can see them. Okay. So here's my, you know, here's my monogram frame, right? Well, you know, this, this monogram is never going to fit in there. It's just too big. So if I have like 10 names and I adjust this monogram and say, well, you know, they all have to fit here. Then when I do one, the others are going to basically fit too. I might have to adjust for something, you know, like this, but this, you know, font is kind of odd. I might have to adjust some things, but for the most part, these are all lining up in the spot they're supposed to be. Um, the name of the font, Mert, that I just used here is called Calamity Jane. I wouldn't use it, actually, for a monogram. It's actually kind of a fun font. I was just kind of grabbing something quick on, on my computer. I'd, I'd use a you know more scrolling font or a more monogramic typing font, type of font. But if you do, you could do a search for Calamity Jane. I have to bold it if I want to use it for lettering because it's one of those really skinny type of fonts. So I just bold it to get it to show up correctly. All right, so I hope that makes sense and so you can see why name drop might be beneficial um, to play with a little bit and see what happens. And, you know, worst case, you have to stop after the blue or, you know, and, and if you look like, let me go ahead and show you when I export this. I'm going to export this. When we have three names here. Okay, so let me export and there's a logic to this. All right, so let's import that monogram thing that I just did now. Okay, so here's my monogram, right? And okay, so here's my green, here's my pink, here's the gold, here's the blue. There's my green. You can see it didn't change the colors so much this time. They're all, you know, that green's a little bit lighter. There's pastoral green, that's pro Aaron. So you have this pastoral green. It's changed it slightly on this first color. And that's to indicate that, hey, you know, this is starting that next round. But, you know, there you go. There's my, you know, monogram. And these are still blue. The letters have remained blue. See, blue, 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 right? Donna's saying with ZSK, and she's right, this one I do know, with ZSK that you can program the stop on your controller when you put your thread colors in. 
So if you know it's like this design, four colors, and then you're rehooping, you would put that stop command in right after that fourth color. And I'm pretty sure if you go through your SWF and Prodigy manuals or look at the instructions on your controllers, I'm pretty sure all of the machines give you that option. Okay? So, you know, look at your controller and, you know, see what it's got. And, Gloria, I'm sorry, I kind of misunderstood what your question was. I was thinking more in terms of the software. Um, I didn't realize you were kind of talking about your machine controller. But look at your controllers, and you have to kind of look at your books. And, you know, and I will ask the techs if they can, you know, maybe give me a quick little instruction sheet for the different machines and, and where you can locate that. But you guys should all have manuals or should be able to get them online so that you can program those in as you load that design. But anyway, so I'm hoping, you know, that makes a little more sense on the name drop issue, how you can handle that, what the function is, what it's actually for. Because when, you know, I first looked at this and I thought, I don't really see anything but one name, number one. And you don't see this, you know, duplication go on. You don't see the additional names being added or letters being added until it gets to your machine and you know so but it it kind of has a logic to it like i don't really need if i have 10 names i don't need 10 templates i just need one i just need it centered once if you know my colors are red white blue and green then they're going to be red white blue and green for every single one of those designs that get layered so do you guys have any more questions on the name drop at all? You guys good? You're going to play with that a little bit? Um, 